Hi everyone, it's Stephanie back with a spinning tutorial this week. This week I want to show you how to add beads to your art yarn. Beads or buttons or anything sort of big and chunky like that. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do to add beads to your yarn. One is with adding it to the single as you are spinning it and the second way I'm going to show you is when you are plying the yarn you can add it that way so to start with I just started spinning some of this um, roving that I have I've spun a little bit just to get a start remember I always always spin clockwise and I always like to start spinning and if I'm doing an art yarn I don't do anything that's too crazy in the beginning so that I have enough yarn that I can cast on, okay? So there aren't any beads added here yet. So what I did to prepare for this is I took some of my fiber and some beads, let me do it for you, and I, so I have these little elephant beads I don't know if you can see them too well. I'll try and get that. There we go. I love how they are ivory, but they have this old weathered look and they have a lot of brown running through them. So that's why I chose to add this particular charm to this yarn. And you can see what I have done is I've just taken a bit of fiber and I've just simply threaded it through this elephant bead. And I'm sure you can imagine what the next step is. I'm just going to go along spinning. And I'm just going to add, I'm gonna just join this in the same way I would do if I was joining another piece of fiber. And I'm gonna let the spin go through it here. Okay, and so you can see now I've got this nice elephant on here and it's nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. So then I'm going to take my next bit of fiber from the bat and I'm going to join it at this end. Now remember you always join fuzzy end to fuzzy end so I haven't spun this end yet. I'm going to do just a regular join slowly I'm obviously I'm using my spin illusion echo and even though I have an orifice here this elephant charm was too thick to go through so I'm just going to help it out by winding it on here there okay so then I'll go ahead and I'll spin a little bit more Now I could not do this type of spinning on my, on my shot matchless. Um, it's just not set up to do art yarn this way, but my Echo can do pretty much anything. So now I'm at the next point where I can add another charm or another bead. And this time I'm going to add this really cute button. Let me show it to you. And I've done the same thing. I have simply taken a bit of fiber and threaded it through the buttonholes. See? And I'm going to break off here where I'm spinning. So see, I've got that bit. I'm going to set aside the part that I'm spinning or the, the fiber source, I guess you should I should call it and I'm going to simply do a join the same way I did it before and you can see the button spinning around there now I'm going to join this back on here again fuzzy to fuzzy I got a little bit too carried away in the spinning here so there we are. 
Okay, and now the button is on there. And it went through the orifice, but you can hear it a little bit. It's a little bit caught up now in this space, so I had to help it through. And if you're adding big pieces like this to your art yarns, you're, be prepared. Whoops, my join didn't hold. That's okay. Sometimes that's going to happen. All I have to do, see the button is still on here with this end though. I just didn't have enough of the fiber. I let the twist go in too far to my fiber on this side. So all I'm going to have to do is undo some of that twist so that it really melds with the fiber that I'm adding it to. There we go. So that we have the fuzzy end to the fuzzy end, remember. Okay. And I'm gonna go out a little bit more. So this happens when you're spinning. That's why I'm not cutting this part out so that you can see, okay, it happens. It's not a big deal. It's easy to fix. And this is happening because I think I have the fiber that I have this, uh, this button attached with, it's, I should have added a little bit more fiber to it. So there's just a very small amount of fiber. So I'm gonna let the twist build here, building, building. Still, let's see what's going on here. And it's still, not quite working the way I want it to. So I'm just going to undo again. And I've been spinning for, for years, you all. This happens, okay? I don't want you to get discouraged by this. I want this to just be part of the process. You just untwist it. That's the, <laughs> that's the bottom line. We're just untwisting what we've spun. We're taking the twist out because that's all spinning is really is adding twist to fiber. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to untwist this part too. And I'm going to slowly, oh no, now it came out on my top end because I untwisted too much. Okay, so we're going to start over on this whole button, okay? We're just gonna start over with it. Okay, so in my head, this went a lot smoother than it's going today. <laughs> so this video might be a bit of a fail because the joins just are not happening. Now I have done this before, I swear. I have a, a really great yarn that works for Halloween where I made roll eggs and I have this, these skull um, beads that are pretty much the same as these little elephant beads, same color. And I did that yarn with all shades of white and gold. And I added my little skull beads to it. And it took wonderfully. It's a nice, strong yarn. Um, We've had no issues with breakage on that one. So I don't know if these elephant beads are just too, too big. I don't know if that's what's going on. I don't know if it's just too much fiddling going on and the twist is building up too much. But here, let's see what we can do here. What I've done now to try and fix this problem with breaking is instead of working up here so close to the orifice, I'm working back here a little bit further so that, that I can get more twist in the yarn around the elephant and then I can have more yarn to play with to twist it onto the bobbin. So here we go. So let's get it on the bobbin and hope that this time is a winner. And it looks like it is. Look at this. We have our little elephant charm on there. So let's keep going. And now keep in mind that we need to work further back 
from the orifice. I didn't have to do this last time. I didn't have to work all the way back here, but this time it looks like I need to. Okay, so I have one more elephant to add on here. And I might try these buttons again. We'll see. So I've just pulled my working yarn off. I'm going to join here, back, way, way back from the orifice. And we're gonna hope that this works, you all. Okay, so far so good. Now let's try this. Got one end joined. Got the other end joined and now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna work way, way back here. You can't even see my hands, but this is so that I have enough yarn to quickly move it on to the bobbin. And see, this is how you'll fix your, your spinning mistakes. You'll play around until you find a way to do what you want to do. So it looks like that's the solution. So when using bigger beads, work further back from the orifice so that you can have, you can build up enough twist before and after your bead, okay? Let's try these buttons again, shall we? Let's try and be brave. Let's see what happens. I still might not have enough, enough fiber on either side, but what the heck, let's try it. This is how we learn. And I told you this channel will be different than most because I'll show you when I mess up. There's nothing to be ashamed of. We're all learning here. Okay, just because I've done this successfully before does not mean this time will be successful. It's different every time you sit down at the wheel. Okay, so I'm gonna try and add this button now. We'll see what happens. And I feel like I'm a little too close to the orifice. So I'm gonna go down here. Okay, and now we're gonna try and join again down here. And okay, it looks like we've got it. Looks like that was the issue, working too close to the orifice. So now that we know that, we can add all kinds of things now to our yarn. We just know that we have to be back a little bit. That's all. So I'm gonna try and add this last button. Let's see where it goes. So again, I'm gonna pull off the yarn and I have a feeling this is too close to the orifice. So I'm gonna pull back a little. Ooh, I don't know if this will work. That is not a lot of fiber, but let's try it anyway, shall we? I'm trying to get it straightened out because it's still got some twist from the last time when I pulled it off, but I don't know. I am not having great feelings about this, but I want to try it anyway because like I said, this is how we learn. Okay, now I'm splitting open the fiber here to make sure that I can get this button fiber in with my working fiber. And we're looking good so far. Okay, it's looking good. Nice and tight on there. Now let's try this. This is the true test. See whether we can get this button on here. 
and feels like a good join, you guys. Okay, so let's now quickly roll onto the bobbin. Get some twist going. And there we go. That worked. Okay, so that's the key. You need to have enough fiber before and after your bead, which means you need to work further back from the orifice, okay? So I'm gonna finish up spinning this little bit right here because now I'm going to show you, next I'm going to show you, I should say, how you can add beads if you are plying. And this is an easier way, I think, okay? So here we go. We have finished spinning this part, okay? So we're gonna pretend that we have spun quite a bit, okay? And we're going to put our look see we've got buttons in here we have elephants in here so we've added three elephants and two buttons okay I'm going to set this up on my lazy Kate and then I'm going to show you how to ply and add add beads that way all right I'm back I have an empty bobbin on my wheel and I have the yarn that we just spun on my Lazy Kate. And I also have the yarn I'm going to use to ply with. I'm just using some cotton slob yarn um, because this is just a practice skein. This isn't anything I'm going to keep. So this is really weaving yarn. And let me show you what I've done. If I was really going to do this, I would be using a much thinner yarn to ply with. Okay, but what I've done is I've strung the beads. You see, these are the little skulls I was talking about earlier. I've strung the beads, two skulls, and then six of these little gold beads. I've strung them on my plying thread and I've pushed them down close to the bottom. I don't have them up here at the top where I'm going to be starting to ply. Okay, and that's because what I'm going to do when I ply I am going to stop and move the, th the bead that I want to add to the yarn up, okay? So let's get started plying and let's see how this works. I will tell you that I tend to like to ply the other way where I'm adding the bead to my yarn directly instead of doing it this way but that's just my preference. I wanted to show you both ways so that you can figure out which way is best for you. Now remember, we were spinning clockwise, so we're going to ply counterclockwise, okay? So here we go, just getting everything started. Getting everything on here, and I'm just gonna do just a regular traditional ply here, nothing fancy. I'm gonna go for a little bit here in the beginning. And then, I think maybe about, about here would be a nice place for our first bead. So I'm going to stop spinning. I'm going to hold right here so the twist doesn't travel and I'm going to go down to where my beads are, okay? Then I'm going to take that first bead, which in my case happens to be one of these little gold beads, and I'm just going to pull it up, okay? I'm going to pull it all the way up here, and I realize I should have used probably all skulls so that you could see it better, but I've pushed that bead all the way up to the front. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know if you can see it against my very, very white hands, but it is 
right there between my two fingers. Do you see it? Maybe against my jeans, that'll show up a little more. So I'm going to push it into that spot where I am plying, okay? You'll see it better when I do the skulls. So I've got the bead right here where I'm plying. And then I'm just going to continue on plying. And the bead is in here. So, let's see. It's right against the top of my finger. Can you see it? Okay. It'll be, it'll be easier to see once we get to the skulls. So let's add some more. We're plying, plying along normally. It's quickly plying and I think it's time for another bead. So we'll push up this next gold bead right to where the two, the plying yarn and your single right to where they meet and then we'll just ply you might have to put your finger under here like this to hold that bead in place but there we go we'll just keep plying and let that go and what you can do is you can count the number of treadles if you want to make sure that you have an even spacing between each bead count the number of treadles Right now, I'm not doing that because I'm just doing this as a demonstration. So it doesn't matter whether my beads are evenly spaced or not. And you might not want your beads evenly spaced. It's totally up to you. But here I am adding another bead. Right here, my last little gold bead before I get to the skull. And I've just added it in there. And we are just continuing to ply. Okay, so now here comes one of the skulls. So this hopefully will be easier for you to see. So I've pushed it up here. I'm gonna hold this finger at the end of the skull, and then I'm going to let this yarn just jump over it. Now the only thing that I don't like about it, doing it this way, is that I have this bit of yarn that goes over the bead, but it still looks pretty cute. Let's see if you can see this one. See, we've got it in there and it's nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Okay. So then we just again continue plying until we get to our next one, which is a gold bead and this time I think I'm going to try to add two because why not we're learning here so I've pushed two of my little gold beads up here I'm holding my finger underneath them and I'm just going to ply there we go and then we just continue on the skull is much smaller so it went directly onto the bobbin without me having to manipulate the yarn much. So now I've pushed my bead up here again, my last bead, and then we're just going to ply. And now we've come to our first bead that we've added to our single, and it's one of the buttons. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and ply and what I'm making sure to do is to take my plying yarn and have it come behind the front of this button because I really like the pattern here. So it's twisting behind the button. Okay, whoops, wrong way. And that way it kind of hides it a little bit. So it looks awfully cute on there though. Okay, I'm so glad these buttons worked out. Let me show you how cute this looks. Can you see that? This is the back. So it looks as if the button is just sort of sitting there, but really it is nicely and tightly 
attached to our yarn. Okay, so we're gonna let that go through. And now since we know this is one of the bigger things we were working with, we know we're gonna have to help it onto the bobbin. Okay, so that's what I did there, just sort of helped it along. And we're gonna keep plying. And then we've come to our last skull on here. And so I'm gonna just push it up. I've pushed it up here. And again, I'm going to jump this singles behind it, okay? So I let the twist sort of jump behind the skull. And then jump on to to ply with the plying thread. And that's really all that you do. Those are two ways that you can add beads to your yarn while you're spinning. And it makes a really cute yarn. Um, it gives you a lot more versatility to your yarn. And it's just, it can add a lot of interest to your work. So I hope this video was helpful. I'm Stephanie Nipper. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. We are almost to 1,000 subscribers, you all. And you know what that means, a giveaway is coming. So please continue commenting. I have talked to several of you on Ravelry, so thank you for going on over there. In one of the next videos, I'm going to be showing you what I'm doing to prep for the Tour de Fleece, and I'll be talking a little bit more about what we're going to do for the Tour de Fleece. So stay tuned for that video. Until next time, I'm Stephanie Nipper, and happy spinning.